What is this place, anyway? You said you wanted to sit down. It's the public library. Did you realize it's the same iconic library in New York that has appeared in many, many films? For example, Ghostbusters, Fast and Furious, The Time Machine, Regarding Henry, and Breakfast at Tiffany's. It was also featured prominently in the movie The Day After Tomorrow, where people take refuge from the storm. As the symbolic space of the library, the Rose Reading Room is a marvel of architecture. One of the largest rooms in the United States without a dome, interior columns, or steel reinforced walls to support the ceiling. It is about the length of two city blocks with 52 foot high ceilings. Did you also know that beneath the Bryant Park next to the library lies over 37 miles of bookshelves? This is Bryant Park, a beautiful and popular space right next to the public library. This massive extension was built underneath the park, making it a unique location where you're literally walking on top of millions of books, all waiting to take their 955 foot train ride above ground. When you place a request for an item, it can take as little as five minutes to go from this Bryant Park stacks to the Rose Main Reading Room. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the world of Library Hunter. Are you ready to explore this iconic New York Public Library? Let's go. New York Public Library System is one of the largest public library systems in the U.S and one of the largest research library systems in the world. We are standing on 5th Avenue and 41st Street, facing the grand facade of the New York Public Library. This marble structure was once the largest in the country, a symbol of New York's growing importance on the world stage. Look at the iconic lions guarding the entrance. I was told that their names, patience and fortitude, were chosen to symbolize the resilience and strength needed during the Great Depression. The Stephen A. Schwartzman Building is the flagship building in the New York Public Library System in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. The library has a rich history dating back to the 19th century. It was created by combining smaller grassroots and social libraries, also supported by generous donations from some of the wealthiest Americans of the time. As we step inside, we are greeted by the grandeur of Astor Hall, named in honor of the generous Astor family. This magnificent foyer of the Stephen A. Schwartzman Building provides a stunning welcome to this New York City landmark. The library's Beaux-Arts style of architecture, characterized by grand symmetry and intricate ornamentation, is on full display as high vaulted ceilings top a spacious rectangular room. The architecture of the building with its marble facade and elaborate decoration is a testament to the collaborative effort of immigrant craftsmen who worked on every detail.
Now we enter long corridors and gallery spaces used for special exhibitions. Walking with me in the New York Public Library, and you might wonder, where are all the books? The answer lies beneath your feet. Around 4 million books are stored in these subterranean stacks. The library's underground stacks were initially conceived in the 1980s during the renovation of Bryant Park. At the time, funding allowed for the completion of only the top floor of the space, which became operational in 1991. The second level was fully completed in 2016, thanks to the generosity of longtime library supporters. The Milstein research stacks are now complete with high density movable shelving, climate control, fire suppression systems, and a conveyor system that transports materials from the stacks to readers throughout the Schwartzman building. So next time you're exploring the beautiful Bryant Park, Remember that just below your feet lies a hidden gem of books waiting to be discovered in the Milstein Research Stacks.
As we ascend the staircase and enter the catalog room, you'll notice the beautiful woodwork on the desks. The library began cataloging electronically in 1971, marking a significant shift in its systems.
The DeWitt Wallace Periodical Room is named for the founder of Reader's Digest magazine. In the 1920s, DeWitt Wallace spent countless hours in the periodical room, reading and condensing articles from the library's collection. In 1983, the room's restoration was made possible by a generous gift from the Wallace Fund, established by DeWitt Wallace. This ERA exhibition, Equal Rights Amendment, A Century of Speaking Out, explores the complex history of the proposed Equal Rights Amendment in the United States. If you watch the TV series Mrs. America, I'm sure you'd be interested in this exhibition. Mrs. America is based on and dramatizes the story of the movement to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment and the unexpected backlash led by conservative activist Phyllis Schlafly in the 1970s. Located in the Rayner Special Collections wing of the library building, this thought-provoking exhibition delves into the fight for gender equality, showcasing the obstacles faced, the victories achieved, and the continued discussions on how to ensure equal rights for all.
The Rose Main Reading Room is the most famous room in the library. But if you wish to enter this room, please be noted that this is a quiet room. It's only open for the readers with books and laptops. The architectural articulation features giant arches and large windows that allow in lots of natural light. Being on the third floor, you're further away from the noise and busyness of the city below, making it a peaceful retreat for whoever needs to focus on their work. For more than 100 years, the majestic main reading room has supported writers, students, and others. It offers a quiet place for study and research. This bazaar space is in keeping with the rest of the library. Old world charm and idyllic murals envelop readers in a peaceful retreat. The ceilings in the room are a beautiful morning sky design by James Wall Finn, and the room itself is one of the largest in the country without a dome, columns, or steel reinforced walls. An engineering achievement, it's almost the size of a football field, spanning two blocks. Below the room are seven layers of cast iron and steel stacks, providing all the structural support needed for the room's impressive length without the need for interior supports.
step outside the building, don't forget to check out the fountains. It was under construction during my day of visit, but it looks great on picture. It's adding a touch of Parisian charm to the landscape. It's interesting to note that many government buildings across America, including the White House and courthouses, are designed in a similar architectural style. Located in the heart of Midtown Manhattan, the library serves as an inviting oasis for visitors from all over the world. I also visited the Stavros Nyarkos Foundation Library right across the street. Its rooftop terrace is now open to the public to enjoy great views of Midtown Manhattan and open air seating. More videos about libraries in New York are coming up soon, so make sure to subscribe now. If you know a good spot to read in New York, don't forget to comment down below and let me know. See you in the next library. Bye.